I wanted to show you these blooms before they are gone so that when you are designing your garden and trying to choose the plants for your garden that you would know when uh, kind of like the timeline of when these things will be blooming for you so this is the last week of May and these right here are chive that I started from seed and unfortunately they are flopping right now because yesterday we had a heavy rainstorm and they were looking absolutely gorgeous but this is what happened after the heavy rainstorm and I wish I was able to get to them before I got uh, before we got the rainstorm but uh, I didn't even realize that they are flopping until I came out here so this is really sad but once these are done blooming what you want to do is you just want to shear them back so that they don't spread their seeds everywhere and then you'll end up with chives everywhere and when you shear them back what happens is that they will bloom again for you and uh, their foliage I think you know, it's not necessarily the most glorious thing, but it still will look beautiful in combination with other plants around it. And right now these are sort of like in the front of the bed and I do have a hookara right in front of them that the chickens have pulled up and then I had to replant. They ripped its roots out completely. So once this hookara fills in, in here, I think it will look beautiful. And uh, the thyme also is kind of hiding some of the foliage as well. There's another hookara right there. I started these hookaras as well from seed. These are the firefly, no, not firefly, excuse me. These are the, I think, uh, purple palace hookara, I believe. That's what it is. And we are also here. So in the first week of May for us here in zone 5B, 6A, we in New Hampshire, You'll be expecting your Japanese irises to start blooming. I will also take a cli a clips as we go along uh, this uh, month and show you what's blooming uh, during this month of June, last week of May, sort of, so that you can get an idea again. And uh, excuse the hoses, I do need to clean up this area over here, but let's focus on these flowers right here right there you can see this is the uh, creeping time i bought the seeds off of amazon and i will never buy seeds off of amazon again but i think it's very beautiful when it's blooming and this side over here is actually doing really well the time is looking healthy it doesn't have any dead in it versus on this side over here you can kind of see some scraggly branches and such but i think it looks sort of natural I may change it for something else in the future, I don't know, but for now I am keeping it. And I do love how it cascades over the rock wall over here. And then right behind that, and oh by the way, I believe that this is not, <laughs> this is not the creeping time I was going for. I wanted the one that's super soft and low, and this is not it. Uh, on, the, on the description when I bought it, when I bought the seeds it just said pink creeping time and I bought a whole bunch of varieties and I ended up just doing this one only because I didn't like the way how it behaved um, and right behind that we have some dianthus that are looking absolutely glorious and I started these dianthus from just one pot uh, it was like about I don't know a four inch pot or something like that maybe a little bit bigger maybe a gallon pot and I planted them in this area. So in this area, we actually have a huge slab of concrete and maybe only about this much soil. So I needed things that don't have an extensive root system. And this is why I chose these plants that are here because these, you know, they can kind of spread their roots around. And I think also the concrete slab keeps their roots cool so they don't fry in the sun and they still do really well in here. I don't know the name of the variety of this dianthus, but what I do is I just let it uh, seed. You can deadhead it and it will continue to bloom throughout the summer if you keep deadheading it. Uh, and But I don't because I am letting it spread in this area right here so that we can ha kind of have a swath of them. And again, this, have, this started from only maybe a gallon pot. And right above those, you see the bearded irises that are just starting to bloom and these are in their bud stage that are about to open right here uh, but i hope the camera is showing the color in here but it's 
I feel like it's uh, a faded color on the camera. It kind of washes out the colors. Um, these irises have been at, in this property in the front flower bed and I took them and I divided them and I have so many irises just from those few that were in the front flower bed. I'll take you there in just, in just a minute. But um, I was able to multiply them <laughs> everywhere. And you can see them there right behind the chives as well over there. And they kind of add this beautiful height and texture as well. And I love their blue color. I love blue irises, uh, the blue foliage on the irises, the bearded irises. I do want to get a variety that has the variegated foliage. I think it's very beautiful. And right next to them, we also have some geranium that I also found on the property. And then I moved it to wherever I figured it would fit. And I do like it right here in this corner and it's kind of spreading. I think I started in from one plant over here, then I divided it into two plants. And now you can kind of see it, it's, it's slowly spreading in this area. And again, I can't really plant things with deep roots in here. So this is perfect for this area. It's a little bit, well, it's very weedy right now. Uh, and we'll get to cleaning it. I didn't even get a chance to mulch this bed yet. I didn't mulch any of my beds, I should say. And behind those, there's uh, just some um, swamp milkweed that keeps seeding itself in here. And I do let some of them go in here because they are a great source of food for the monarch butterflies. And I just keep them under check, under control. And I take out the ones that are kind of in the front of the bed, or maybe if there's too many of them, like that one right there should be taken out. Uh, and they're super easy to pull out. Now they do spread by rhizome, but if you keep on top of them, then they will be, they, they should be okay. And if you get them before they spread their seeds as well. Uh, once they are done flowering, they have beautiful flowers and they have a beautiful smell, a beautiful scent to them as well. But once they are done flowering, you just cut the flower head off and you'll leave the foliage. And again, it's a great source of food for the monarch uh, caterpillars. Okay, so now let's go to the front, but I just want to give you a kind of a quick view of this. I think we'll make this as the thumbnail. <laughs> right here, again, we have the irises right there are just ready to start blooming. I transplanted these also last year. I put them in here. Again, I divided the irises that were in the bed I just showed you, and I put them in here. And we have this one that I can't actually take out, and I'm just kind of leaving it in here because it planted itself into the wood. <laughs> and I think it looks really sweet. I love the blooms on it. And again, it's the same variety, but I would love to have multiple varieties of irises, especially the deep purples and blues. I love those colors. This is kind of a violet color and um, the throat has some a little bit of orange in it, kind of like a yellowish orange. Uh, I think it's a beautiful variety and ignore the lily of the valley. I'm just trying to kill them over here and it looks like I need to spray them again. But anyways, and Right over here, look at this glorious Wygilla. These are actually two Wygilla shrubs. Again, they were here when we uh, bought this property. And let's ignore the weeds behind them. <laughs> I have a lot of weeding to do, clearly. But anyways, it is glorious. So I used to trim it. Then I decided, you know what? I don't want to trim it. I want it to kind of do its natural thing. And if I back up over here, you can see kind of how it has this, it, the branches start to sort of cascade and as they get taller they and heavier, they kind of have this waterfall effect to them. And, but this is a magnet for the hummingbirds. We always have hummingbirds on this bush and it's nice that it's in front of the window because then we could see, we could kind of look out the window and see all the beautiful hummingbirds that come to uh, drink from it and of course it's a magnet for other pollinators as well like the uh, bumblebees um, but th these are two different shrubs one that has darker foliage and if I get closer to it you'll see it's kind of 
reminds me of the Wine and Roses Waijilo uh, from the Proven Winner variety, but I'm not sure if this is what it is. I really don't know uh, because, again, I didn't plant this. And then the other variety that's up against it has a different bloom color. It's kind of a, a, a warmer pink while this is more of a cool pink color and I prefer this pink over that but they're both very beautiful and also this one has just the green foliage on it uh, let me see if I can show you better you can see right here and why well, gelas bloom on old wood so if you want to prune it you'll want to prune it right after it's done blooming and you don't want to take out too much of the old wood so that it would have a chance also to bloom on that wood and um, it would have a chance to set some new wood and be ready to bloom on that the next season um, and there's a combination over here that oh and the pots the pansy pots are also suffering from the rain that we got yesterday but over here over here I think this combination is so beautiful. The blooms of the Wygella up against this foliage, the Hosta foliage is gorgeous. And then right on this side over here, we have some bearded irises that I did not clean up from last year. Shame on me. Um, but once these start blooming with the Wygella blooms and the Hosta, and it's just so beautiful. There are some over here as well and they are just gorgeous together. So I'll be showing you that once we get the blooms, if hopefully they'll be blooming in tandem together. Now I showed you the Lamium in the last garden tour, but now it is blooming even more. And I was hoping we would have an overcast day, but we don't. Um, it was overcast this morning and it looks like the blooms, I feel like as they mature, they look more and more purple to me, uh, but they are closer to a magenta color. They are, again, they are, they seem to be changing a little bit of their color as they mature. And right here, I think this is geranium mycorrhiza, micro, I think, is that how you pronounce it? Again, the rain uh, did a number on it and it's flopping a little bit, but you can see right here, it's in bud stage right now and it will be blooming in a week or so, or maybe even uh, sooner than that. I love this one. I'm keeping it here for now, but I'm going to be dividing it and moving it into other places. I don't know when that's going to happen. And I love this combination right here between the fern and the geranium in front of it. I think it's very beautiful. And this happened by accident. I didn't plant the fern right there or the geranium. This was here when we, um, again, this was here on the property before we got, <laughs> before we got here. So it's a lot of work, you know, I, preparing all the areas and everything uh, takes a lot of time and effort but it's it's happening slowly in the butterfly garden we also have the salvia that's blooming right now and it's looking very beautiful um, i need more of it i think in this corner over here i think i should start more seeds of this uh Ras rose raspberry salvia in here because it is beautiful i love it and it has this beautiful soft soft lavender color kind of it is really nice i love it and i'm working on setting up the irrigation in here as well i just need some parts for the bottom right here so that we can end the lines and i am setting it up where the they all feed from the same tubing right here and they go down this way because it's on a really steep slope and if I were to set up the irrigation going this way or in a grid then we might have um, really bad flow in here because what I did is I don't know if you can see the trench that I dug over here so I dug a trench from that flower bed from the kids flower bed right there and then I dug a trench all the way to that flower bed right there. And it's going to be connected to a, sorry, it's so blurry, uh, uh, to a timer from there. 
and these are the only beds that are going to be on this uh, zone and uh, yeah anyways so right here we have this rose rat raspberry salvia that's blooming in late May and I have a feeling that if I keep on deadheading this salvia that it will continue to bloom and I don't think I'm gonna leave any to go to seed because I I mean would they germinate in this mulch that I have over here there is a chance that they would but I don't think they have a ver very high likelihood of germinating in here I might have a better chance of just starting them from seed I think and in this bed right here you can see we have some lupins that are blooming and I love the purple ones I also love the pink ones this is the pink one this is the first year it blooms and um, it is weak it needs uh, some more fertilizer and some soil acidifier because it's very very yellow and lupins like an acidic soil and we don't have acidic soil we have sort of a neutral soil in some areas it's more um, high pH soil so it's alkaline uh, but let me get you a close-up on these blooms look at them and they're still going you see all this right there it's all going to continue to produce more blooms and open up so we're gonna have a giant bloom stock this year uh, it is glorious I love lupins so this is it for the month of uh, the end the last week of of May and uh, I will show you again what's blooming in the next week maybe or in a few days after after I have filmed this look at this this is only the second day after showing you the lupins and they have already the blooms have already put on so much growth it's so windy and I'm sorry I don't have my microphone but it looks so beautiful together today is June 1st and the dutzias are in full bloom these are the cherry blossom dutzias and I love these so much because they not only uh, bloom but they also act sort of as a ground cover and where they touch the grounds they start setting roots and also look at their blooms they do look like cherry blossom they are absolutely gorgeous I wonder if they have a scent to them oh, they do have a beautiful scent also it's sort of like an apple blossom scent almost and I have three of these in here and here let's look at this one right here you can see this branch is touching the ground right here there's soil beneath it and probably in the next season it will it would have set up set out roots in here and then uh, it will basically produce another plant and then it will start also growing from this section right here i think that these will look really nice once they fill in this border right here And there's this beautiful geranium that planted itself over here and I'm super happy that this happened it looks really happy it looks like it loves the acidic soil because the junipers make the soil acidic and it looks really happy I don't water it. I don't do anything to it it's blooming and it's full of buds this is I believe a native to our state so we live in New Hampshire and I, I know that I know that proven winners I think I don't know if Proven Winners or another plant company came up with a variety called the New Hampshire uh, Geranium. And this one looks very similar to it. So I'm guessing this is probably it. And right here we have some Siberian Iris that is in bloom. And these, I love this type of Iris. I love the color and I love the shape of the blooms and the strappiness of the foliage and look at the white also the white edging inside the bloom it looks really really beautiful and this bed needs a hole overall but i don't know when i'm going to be able to do that also this is the tiger grass right here and miscanthus tiger grass and uh, this year i'm not seeing the variegation on it i don't know what's happening maybe it's just it's still too young probably 
to the, the leaves I mean are probably still too young but this will grow about as high as that uh, conifer over there and it will look really beautiful especially in the fall and look this is what I was talking about the other day when you have this beautiful gorgeous purple bluish bloom up against the Wygilla over here, especially this Wygilla. There are two Wygillas in here. Isn't that gorgeous? I love this. I mean, look at this. And look at the bearded irises over here. They are looking glorious. They are loving the sun and the combination between the bearded irises, the dianthus, and this thyme over here is just magnificent and I love it every year and I look forward to it every year. Also, last year I planted these irises in front of the or behind the chives and I really love this combination as well. Sorry, it's super sunny in here, so I hope you guys can kind of get the picture what's happening here but I do love this I mean let me see if I can grab one of them and get it close to the bloom here look at this they're very similar in color but I think they work really well together especially with the blue uh, color the blue foliage of the bearded irises with the blooms I think it makes it extra beautiful and here it is this is the Siberian iris over here. Siberian? Yes. It's just beginning to bloom. You can see all the buds are just about to open. Right here, the columbines are in bloom as well. And there's some weeding I need to do in here. So this is the leprechaun gold columbine. And I think the blooms were fresher yesterday when I saw them. I was mowing the lawn and I looked over here and I saw these were in bloom. They look gorgeous. I need to start spraying in here before the deer start munching on stuff. But isn't that beautiful? Look at those. Uh, the, what's it, what are these called? Uh, uh, the pollen sacks over here. I forgot what they're called. <laughs> And it's just, it's so delicate and I feel like you could almost see through it and through the petals. It's very beautiful. And the foliage is also variegated. I love this foliage. And I forgot the name of this one, but I'll try to flash it on the screen. If I remember, look at this bloom. Isn't that gorgeous? It's on this side. It reminds me a little bit of a rose, sort of, or, or some sort of a dessert. And also the color on the back of the bloom is beautiful as well. It's gorgeous on both ends. And then there's also this one right here. And I did not realize I ended up with different varieties of columbine. I forgot what I planted in here. Uh, but I started these from seed through the winter sowing method. And uh, some of them germinated and some of them did not. But uh, this is also one of the varieties that I started from seed. And this is beautiful. I sowed another one that had a deeper color than this and looked between this one and this kind of shape of bloom. It was in between that shape, but a much darker pink than this. So I'm hoping that maybe that one over there will be it. I don't know. We'll see. And I really hope that these actually do sow them as themselves in here. This weed that you see here, I do have to come here and kind of weed out the things that I don't want and leave the things that I do want. I'm thinking of leaving this area sort of more on the natural side for now until I have more plants for it. But there are beautiful plants that nature starts and I believe this is a native to our state over here. This is jewel weed and it makes beautiful uh, kind of orange blooms that look like jewels. It's, it grows in the uh, like at the edge of 
forests, which kind of what you see here at the edge of the woods. Um, and then I also found another plant that I thought is super cool. Oh, I found another one. Is that it or is that? Anyways, um, so this plant right here, I have some gravel that I need to sift. This plant right here, I believe, is trillium, and it's making a bloom head. I don't know if you guys can see it. Here's the bloom head right there. I could be mistaken, but uh, this, I believe, is also a native because I did not plant this in here. It planted itself, and I think it looks very beautiful. I love the leaf structure on it, and I think I'm going to keep this and just kind of let it do its thing in here. I do have to dedicate a day though to weed out the things that should not be in here because I'm seeing a lot of things that should not be here. And this right here is what I believe is called false Solomon seal and it loves this spot. I did not plant this here, this was here. So when I cleaned up this area a couple years ago which was full of thorn bushes and such, I found this one here and I did rogue quite a bit out of it quite a bit of it out of here because it does spread and you kind of have to stay on top of it but it's beautiful and it looks really happy in here the foliage on it is huge and, and I think I'm pretty sure it's called false Solomon seal if I'm wrong I'll put the name on the screen but it does look very similar to Solomon seal uh, but the blooms start on tip of it instead of at the bottom. It's a really beautiful woodland shade kind of situation plant. And I do have to say that I don't water it, I don't feed it, I don't do anything to it. It's doing all this on its own. Today is June 4th and the roses are starting to bloom. This is the first rose that comes to bloom. And I believe this is the oh-so-easy lemon squeezy landscape rose from Proven Winners. This was on the property, but I moved it over here. It never did well where I planted it. And you can see there are some leaves that are being chewed up. So yesterday, early morning, I came and I sprayed all my roses with all-season horticultural oil. And if I continue to see some problems on it in about a couple weeks or three weeks, I will spray it again. I will have to read the label and see how often I can spray it so that I don't actually do damage to the plants. And it looks like there are, oops, if I can show you, there are some bugs on it, on the buds. So hopefully that what I sprayed yesterday We'll take care of those. It looks like it might be aphids because I see ants on it too. This geranium is now in bloom also. I don't know what variety of geranium it is. It could be a mycorrhizum, mycorrhizum, I don't know. Just look at the Atlas rose in bloom. It is gorgeous. I'm so excited about this rose. It took it several years, but, and by several, I mean, this is, I think, is this its fourth or fifth year in the ground? And this is when it actually started putting on some growth and blooming like this. Aren't these blooms look so gorgeous? I love the color. You know, this is not like a saturated orange. I don't like a sat saturated orange, but this is more like a an apricot sort of color, and it's just so gorgeous, and it's full of blooms right now. And so if you notice that the roses are sort of glistening, the reason why is because I just sprayed them with the horticultural oil. I do this in the morning and it's pretty sunny today. And look what's exciting, something exciting. We're getting a bloom on the Gertrude Tickle. Isn't that exciting? And these pansies need to retire. <laughs> is it dry right now? No, I don't think so. But they're starting to look tired, this one. Looks like it's dying, I don't know. But yeah, I need to pull them out of these pots and get the annuals in. I have some really beautiful annuals that are going to be going in here. I do love them. 
I just love this color. I mean, look at this. And these alliums also were um, really beautiful. I'm going to be transplanting them and putting them in a flower bed. And hopefully they would seed themselves. Also right here, uh, the camera keeps moving. Hold on. There we go. Right here, I uh, came the other day and I put down some cardboard and mulch and I planted some zinnias and some cosmos in here. And I am going to be clearing up this whole area because there are tons of weeds in here and also planting in some gumfrina in here. And another exciting thing, I need to do some edging in here, but other than that, this hydrangea over here, this is the, sorry, let me move away. This is the Let's Dance Can Do Hydrangea. This winter it died all the way back to the ground and it sprouted up from the base basically. And look, I see blooms on it. Isn't that so exciting? I'm so excited to see some blooms on this hydrangea. I think it likes this spot. It's not an irrigation. Every now and then I give it some water, but we do get plenty of rain in here and hopefully the summer won't be dry so that I don't have to water it constantly. Because in the heat of the summer, if it does get a lot of sun, which I don't think so because we have those trees behind it that do provide shade in the afternoon. So I think it will be okay because so far, so good. Last year, I didn't see any wilting on it and I think it's gonna be okay. Also, the grasses are putting on some growth, but this hydrangea over here, this is the oak leaf hydrangea. I see some blooms on it. I see also some dead. I transplanted it early this spring and I think this is going to be a good spot for it because it does not like as much sun as I had it and it was in full sun and it was wilting every single day. I had to give it water every single day and I think it's going to like it over here. It looks good and um, it has received a lot of water in the last few days. I watered it then it rained <laughs> so I'm going to have to come here and cut this back over here. And hopefully it's going to start putting on some growth and I do want it to kind of fill in this area over here and look um, lush and full in here. And now let's go into the cottage garden. I do have to clean this area today. I'm going to be doing that after I'm done filming and I'm going to be planting some zinnias all around this area. But I think the medicinal side of the cottage garden is starting to fill in. And I'm super excited about it. I also have lots of weeds that I need to take care of. But look at the hollyhocks. I'm so happy with their growth. And this area is sort of on irrigation, sort of not. I only have a few things that are on irrigation, so I need to actually fix the irrigation this summer. But that's something that I'm going to do after I'm done planting everything. And I also want to get some support for these. I need. I think I'm going to use bus wires. I think that's the best because I used twine last season and they just broke off halfway through the season. So I think to have these properly supported, I'm going to need to use the bus wires. So I have these T-posts over here. I think I need to get ones that are a little bit taller, maybe the seven footers, and that would work out. The idea is that these... Uh, asparagus will block the honeybees so that if we're sitting here on this side the honeybees won't be flying into us and also when I'm working here in the garden then the honeybees won't be in my hair but the other day I came and I planted some new stuff in here but you can see we have the chamomile is starting to flower some of the cam oh, oh there's something that dug my plant up and I need to give it water. This is a stevia that I planted here the other day. Oh, what is this thing that keeps digging in my garden? So stevia is not perennial in our area. We are in zone five. Oh, the poor thing. I'm gonna have to give it some water after I'm done filming. And I got it. I have a few others also that I planted on the deck. 
And I got it because I thought of how exciting it would be to just have this experience of getting the plant that gives you sugar basically in the garden and just having that experience. I grew up eating sugar cane from sugar, the, the sugar canes themselves and that uh, was a really beautiful experience and we can't grow here these here but <laughs> I can grow stevia annually. I don't know maybe I'll try one day one year to grow sugar canes. I also planted here some bergamot, some comfrey, and we have here in the front also the, what's it called? Oh, what's this plant called? <laughs> I think I have a tag. Um, anise hyssop, yes. This is the anise hyssop and it makes these beautiful purple blooms and the hummingbirds, the butterflies, all the pollinators love it. And it's also obviously medicinal plant. And some echinacea purpurea in here that are starting to put on some growth and we have the tetra white fever few that's also been blooming and that one is leaning over not sure why so just ignore the weeds <laughs> and here the black eyed susans are just about to start blooming look at them they're ready they are so ready. Just a quick glance of the vegetable garden. It's looking so good. It's filling in. I have some weeding in the onion beds. I need to do that ASAP. I don't know if I'll be able to get to it today, but that's something that's going to have to happen this week. But I have some frost covers that I still need to get out, <laughs> get out of here. But everything is starting to look so good. I also planted a row of lavender. I have a few plants that are coming in still that I need to finish up. I have some that I have that are super tiny. You can't see in there, but that's gonna look so good. Oh, and the summerific berry awesome hibiscus is starting to put on some growth finally, and we're gonna see some blooms this summer. And this area, I still have lots of weeding to do. I have some plants that I'm gonna be moving from in front of the roses. I mean, there's this black eyed Susan. I mean, how audacious of it to just plant itself in here and block the roses. And we also have these uh, tall flocks that keep just seeding themselves in here so I'm gonna have to move these out of here put plant them somewhere while it's still cool we have some 70 degree weather this week so that'll be good to move them now if I can but this rose actually looks a lot more red on camera than it does in real life it has kind of like a pinkish hue to it and this is why I got it when I got it but um, it works out with the colors that are in this bed and I do love it. And if I, in the future, notice that it's starting to kind of clash with the colors that I'm going to be adding in here, because there's a lot that needs to be changed in this bed. There's a lot of, what do you call it? This uh, Shasta daisies that I started from seed that need to be just, I think I don't need that many of them in here. I only planted them in here because I wanted to fill the bed very quickly, but I'm gonna be moving some of them out of here and hopefully adding some more plants. I don't know if it's gonna happen this year or maybe the next, I don't know. But that's something that's kind of on the back burner right now. I did start a lot of my plants from seed just to, you know, because the expense of just adding that many plants in the garden is tremendous. And I want to cut back the expenses as much as I can. And it allows me to add so many different varieties into the garden. There are so many beautiful plants that you can start from seed and most of the plants that I'm showing you in the garden are started from seed. I am working on this area. This is this looks like a total disaster right now. <laughs> and this honeysuckle, I never got to putting any mulch around it or anything like that. So this, it's been overtaken by grass, but I am going to be moving it at about maybe like over there or over here. I'm not sure, we'll see. I think maybe I'll plant it here and something else on that side. But it is starting to bloom. This is the peaches and cream honeysuckle, I believe. And it is beautiful. I've never smelled it, I'm kind of curious. Oh, it smells so gorgeous. Oh, I just love it. So beautiful. So this area is gonna be revamped. I pulled up the landscaping fabric and I'm gonna be I graded this area a little bit. I'm gonna be putting a pool for the kids here. 
and um, just temporarily, you know, until I can fix another area for the pool. But I think it works out here. And I was pl thinking of planting some sunflowers on this side right here to kind of block it off. And yeah, I'm going to be getting some crushed stone, stone dust to put it down. But if we look over here, this is the butterfly garden. No blooms yet of the raspberries salvia, I think. Raspberries salvia is done blooming. I added lots of plants in here, but I didn't give them any water, so I don't know if they will survive. Some Coreopsis that you can't really see. Um, American Dream Coreopsis. And I have a bindweed problem in here. And some more Coreopsis on this side. I just planted a whole bunch of stuff in here. Some blue flax, the perennial kind. And what else? Chrysanthemum. Yeah, we'll see how everything does, but it's starting to fill in right now. And uh, last season I planted some milkweed in here that is coming back. I also have some lupins that I started from seed this season. And I also planted in here and some anise hyssop. Look at the geranium, it is so full. This bed is totally neglected, so I don't even look at these beds, but I do need to eventually work on them. It is so full of bloom and the pollinators love it. It is gorgeous. Today is June 17 and this rose just started blooming and it doesn't look that healthy this year. I gave it fertilizer. I do need to fertilize it again. I'm actually going to fertilize it right after I'm done filming. But it's not looking that great. Let me see if I can find a good bloom for you over here. And I also have been spraying it with some organic uh, horticultural oil. But something came in the early spring and just ate up all the chewed up the leaves you can see all the holes in them i think this bloom right here though is gorgeous and this rose also has a beautiful scent it's not super strong but it does have a scent to it and usually it is a little bit of a deeper color like a a, a nice peach color and then it fades into like a light pink peach kind of color but it is a beautiful rose and I struggle with it every single year because of the location that it's in. This bed does not get sun in the late afternoon and I feel like maybe this is why this rose is not doing that great and also all the snow from the winter ends up on this rose. I don't know, maybe it's just the variety. I forgot the variety. I lost the tag so I'm sorry. I don't know what variety it is and I do have some deadheading to do. Hopefully in the coming up week. This week is going to be super hot, so I don't know if I'm going to be doing any deadheading because I have other chores. And look at the snapdragon. They're all just starting to bloom. The white variety is the earliest variety to bloom. And of course, the more you deadhead them, the more blooms they produce. But these are gorgeous. This is beautiful. Look at this color over here. It's kind of like a peachy color with a little bit a hint of pink to it it's beautiful and this one I'm not sure is it oh and we have this color over here also let me see if I can get you a bloom let's open and look at that beautiful color over here this is I think this one and the white are my favorite and the hollyhocks are starting to put their bloom heads. Look at them. They are almost ready to open. And here we are a couple days later and look at the snapdragons. They are starting to fill in. We're starting to see some color on that side also. I love this mix and I think that it actually turned out well the way how I planted them. I was nervous that they're not going to look good because I sort of mixed in the color. I snaked them in between each other and I was nervous that 
this is not going to look so good. But look at it. I think it looks very beautiful. And I do have some weeding to do in the onion beds. Uh, but I still have some planting to do this morning. But look at them. Aren't they gorgeous? Look at these colors. And right here, I came the other day and I planted these pansies that were in the pots and, uh, and on the front deck. And I think they look really sweet over here. I did not want to just toss them because I thought they will provide some beautiful color in the fall. And this spot gets morning sun, but it does get afternoon shade. And I think that will kind of give them a reprieve from the hot sun, especially that we are going into a heat wave and we're going into the upper 90s and today it's going to be 96 so these pansies are doing okay over here i'm going to have to water them this morning so that they can be ready for the heat but look at this color isn't that just beautiful look at these blooms and i think they look so sweet with the hostas and a couple days ago, I came over here and I planted these two pots over here. I have some calabricola, white licorice in here, some coleus, and dusty miller. And these pots will soon fill up and look gorgeous in here. Look at the lamium. It is still going nonstop. <laughs> And right here we have the first bloom on our echinacea. So beautiful. This is echinacea purpurea. And the other day I came over here in this front flower bed where the echinaceas are basically. And I planted some petunias and vinca in here, a whole drift of them. And also you can see right here this Veronica is just about ready to bloom. I have three of them in here. And this one is getting swallowed by that wild violet. I need to dig it up and take the roots out, but I'm not gonna do this right now. Maybe I'll do it in the fall. And I think I may wanna put them together in like a cluster, I don't know, but they do look good this way. And a few weeks ago, I came over here and I planted these petunias. This is, I have a lot of weeds in here though that I need to take care of. Sophistic, uh, Sophistica blackberry. And I, I don't know the name of this one. I may have lost a tag. <laughs> and some white alyssum. And some of them did die but some of them are coming back i actually lost all the petunias that i planted from seed in here they just all died i'm not sure why i think they were drying out like that one right there is drying out this is a difficult spot no irrigation in here so i do have to water it by hand and i have some cosmos in the back and some dahlias in the middle i will be putting irrigation in here hopefully in the summer so that when I do plant stuff in here they will still look pretty and I still have a few of the ones that I planted in here from seed like this one this is I think the plum vein petunia it's gorgeous and it does look so pretty with this one also this is so velvety and beautiful and on this side over here where we have the service berry this is where I planted the sunflowers and a couple of them got eaten by the deer so I do have to start spraying and I also planted the coral reef petunia in the front. A few of them died, the ones that I planted from seed, so I ended up replacing them with these right here. Uh, same ones that I have planted on the opposite side, but these look more purple. Oh, this is the blackberry. Oh, I see. The other one is a different color. I thought they were the same color. 
The other one looks kind of like a, a maroon velvet color, and this one is on the purple side. The other one looks black. This has more purple to it. Is it the same one? I'll have to check when I'm editing <laughs> because I just forgot what the name of the other one. Uh, but you can kind of tell the color of the sunflowers from the leaves. Look at that. Isn't that cool? The ones in the back, the mammoth sunflowers, are not so mammoth. <laughs> They're not doing so well. I don't know why. These ones in the front are doing so much better. And maybe that's because they got a little bit of the fertilizer from these plants over here. I don't know. Maybe I should just throw some fertilizer for the ones in the back so that they can kind of catch up. But I think this mix is going to look so beautiful. And the Gara is starting to put its bloom heads, which is so exciting. I planted all this Gara from seed along with the coral reef petunia. Um, I did purchase a few to replace the ones that did die. Uh, so the, the ones that are this one right here and these two right there are ones that I did purchase and the rest are the ones that I started from seed which are starting to fill in. I mean look at them. They're catching up and this one over here also. This one looks really healthy along with its friend over there. And here's an update on the kids' garden. I still have to put landscaping fabric in here, but I have so many projects going on at the same time. So it's filling in and looking beautiful. And look at that cute bunny over there. It's looking beautiful. I do have to cut these back also. Here's an update on the butterfly garden. We have the sunflowers over here that are putting on some growth and the zinnias as well. And the echinacea is just about ready to bloom in here. Things are just about to pop some color. I need to plant some perennials in here that are early bloomers, but the echinacea looks super healthy this year. The lilies, oriental lilies, and the black-eyed Susans. This one right here is the Coreopsis lancelata. So I was listening to Erin, the impatient gardener, the other day, and she was talking about this plant and how it can get out of hand. So I will, I'll have to monitor it, monitor it, see how it does, and then decide what to do with it. Oh, I see another bindweed. We'll see what happens with that one, but I do hope that this one, this Coreopsis americana over here does take. A few of the plants did die, but I think that these will fill in and maybe drop seeds in there also. And hopefully next year we'll have a little more in there. And here's an update on the kids, uh, on the, not the kids, this is the patio area, but I'm going to put a pool right there for the kids. So to this morning, I gotta hurry up and work on this. I'm also gonna be planting some parsley. Right here, we still have some color on that columbine. Look, isn't that amazing? I don't know what's happening with it though. Look at the leaves. What is that? Does anyone know? I've never experienced this before. I don't know what this is. Okay, so I don't have my mic on right now, but I forgot to show you this geranium. Look at it. It's still going. This geranium keeps blooming the entire season, and I believe this is a native to our state. I live in New Hampshire, and I just love it. It's not, you know, super high. It's not invasive. It's uh, just... It does seed itself, but I love where it seeds itself a lot of times, and I just keep it where it's at, and sometimes I just dig it up and move it into different places because it just adds this beautiful texture and color. And honestly, even the seed heads just add a little bit of texture to it, and you can shear it back if you want to, but you don't have to because it just keeps blooming. It doesn't stop.
and also i have some milkweed in here that did seed itself so i just left it and we are just starting to see some blooms on it because the reason why i left it is because i want the monarchs to have a place to lay their eggs i am very passionate on creating space for the pollinators and not just the monarchs but all pollinators with exception to those who eat devour my plants that i want <laughs> otherwise <laughs> the ones that want to eat you know plants like this that's okay <laughs> but i just i think the bloom heads on the milkweed the swamp milkweed is actually very beautiful and yes i have some deadheading to do <laughs> june 21st look what's blooming and oh no i have these black flies on it oh, i have to take care of these i think i'll probably spray it with bt this is the gertrude jekyll and i planted four of them this spring right here and this one is starting to bloom <laughs> the blooms are so cute and little but as it puts on more growth over the years the blooms will also get bigger and there's another bud right here Look at these blooms. These snapdragons are going bananas. They are so gorgeous. I love them. So you're saying me. Yeah, just don't break the bloom, okay? Aren't they beautiful? Uh, Be uh, careful, they're poisonous though. About me. Yeah, those are the same plants. Uh, but these are poisonous. Don't put them in your mouth, okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Aren't they gorgeous? My husband told me they look like candy, and I agree. I think they look like ice cream. Don't they look like ice cream, Serenity? But they are poisonous. Don't lick them. <laughs> They'll make your belly really sick. <laughs> look at these gorgeous blooms. I will put the name of the variety on the screen because I can't remember for the life of me. It is so hard for me to remember any names. I think these colors actually work out really well together because this pink is sort of on the warm tones and you can see this orange in it right here that's displayed in this uh, color right here and then we have the white i love the white love it and i think it looks so gorgeous with this pink over here so beautiful this is i don't know how to pronounce this name. I always call it Saponaria. I've heard people pronouncing it in a different way. Um, I don't know, but I love, love, love this plant. It is a gorgeous filler and a bouquet. And it's, it doesn't last that long, but I just love it. And I will be uh, letting it go to seed and harvesting some seed off of it, seeds off of it, because it's a, just a one-time bloomer. And I just, oh, I love it so much. And here's an update on, uh, uh oh, I gotta cut this branch over here. The water is weighing down the apple tree on this bed over here and it's smashing my petunia. Oh, <sighs> okay, but anyways. I planted all this from seed. This is, I believe, the third week in here. It's been in here. I have been fertilizing it with a liquid fertilizer. And also I gave it a fertilizer, organic fertilizer in uh, the pot when I planted it. And I have uh, put some worms in there in the bed. And I also put some vegetable scraps at the bottom. 
and I think these plants are loving it. Look at this linaria over here. It is gorgeous. And you can see here the sweet alyssum is starting to bloom. And this is the royal carpet alyssum. The coleus is putting on some growth. The dahlia. I think it's called the mignonette dahlia. I just can't remember. Yes, sweetie. I love these. I mean, look at them. And the petunias. This is the wave petunia. It looks warmer on the screen, the tone of the petunia, but it's actually a really beautiful fuchsia color. Uh, very similar to kind of jazzberry, the super petunia jazzberry, but it's not going to be as vigorous as a jazzberry, definitely. And they do need deadheading over here because these are started from seed. But just wanted to give you an update on these. I planted this pot maybe a couple weeks ago all from things that I started from seed. So in the back over here, this one right here is uh, maybe like three plants of lemongrass. And then right behind it, there is uh, this basil, I can't remember its name. And the main reason why I put this basil over here is really for the flowers and for the fragrance not so much for harvesting from it and this is why i am letting it go to flower i think it adds a beautiful texture and color in the back and then right next to it right here this is the pink calendula is that what it's called yeah pink calendula and i have also some zonal geranium and this one is the rose geranium I thought I planted two in here, maybe not. And some petunias. All these I started from seed, all the plants, with exception to the basil over here. And these petunias, it's been raining a lot, so some of them are struggling. And these were struggling in their pots when I planted them. This one has bounded back beautifully. Um, and oh, this geranium looks like it's dying over here. But I think once I fertilize these petunias again, they're going to hopefully do better. This one looks like it might die. I don't know. And this one looks pretty dead. <laughs> but I think if we look at it from the front, it's filling in beautifully and hopefully we can have something in here that will bounce back and fill in this corner right there. Today is June 23 and look at the Veronica. I'm sorry, I don't have my mic with me. I just had to do this because they look amazing. Also, pardon the chickens. We have over here the milkweed that are just starting to bloom. And look at these blooms. Aren't they just gorgeous? And unfortunately, wasps and flies and mosquitoes are also pollinators. <laughs> so we are at the end of June right now. Today is June 26, and the Shasta daisies are just starting to bloom over here. I love Shasta daisies. I think they're beautiful, and they're also great for the pollinators. And if we pan around over to this side, uh, ignore the lawnmower. <laughs> it's broken again. Uh, we're going to try to fix it, hopefully. And uh, I put the pool for the kids. Finally, I've been wanting to do this for two years. And finally, it's done. I set it up yesterday and I had to set up the ground under it and make sure it's firm and level and all that. And I also moved the honeysuckle. It was right here. And I planted some sunflowers on this side. and on that side and also some zinnias in the front and um, we're going to be going to continue the back over there we're going to put maybe i don't know a picnic table or something i don't know if it's going to happen this year but and a fire pit and all that and i think that'd be a fun space and on this side over here this is starting to fill up and we have 
the black-eyed Susans are just starting to bloom. And I had to, to put Rapalzol in a lot of my flower beds and around the trees because the deer are out and they're eating everything. <laughs> they ate already several of my sunflowers. And over here, the oak leaf hydrangea is just starting to bloom and it looks gorgeous. I can't wait for it to put on more growth and we're going to have lots of beautiful blooms, white blooms that will shine in this corner over here. But aren't these blooms gorgeous? Look at them. I just love this. And the thing about the oak leaf hydrangea with this kind of bloom, sorry, let me see if I can give you a better perspective over here to see. These are, I believe, what the bees pollinate right here. And these are false, uh, the false flowers, basically. I don't know what they're called, uh, but they're just kind of showy to attract the pollinators. And this is what actually the pollinators feed on, the green parts over here that you see. And I like that it has the open kind of blooms so that it's easier for the pollinators to get to the flowers and also I think it looks really nice. I love the compact blooms but I also love this style of blooms. I think it's really beautiful. And the other day I came over here and I planted this tiny little clematis. This is the diamantina clematis. And I put up this tutur or obelisk or whatever you want to call it. I need to clean the water over there. I have to clean it about uh, once every couple of days and fill it up because it does rain often over here. So uh, it's not that big of a chore and I like it. And you know, I've seen uh, some birds rest on it and some pollinators as well. And I would love to have something red in this corner and I'm thinking of a red bud for that corner right there, kind of like with a chartreuse color foliage, um, color foliage. <laughs> I think that would look really nice over there. And then eventually we're going to mulch this whole bed and you'll see, you'll be able to see the form of this bed once it's all mulched just wanted to show you a few blooms in the vegetable garden that I think are beautiful. Now I have a lot of cleanup to do in here, but I've been neglecting it because I've been working on the pool area. But uh, these are walking onions and I think they are so sweet. They have like these purple bulblets that they make and then these little tiny flowers. And don't they look gorgeous? And I think if you wanted to make like an edible landscape, you could totally add these in one of your edible flower sort of landscape and they would look gorgeous. I love their blooms and I love how the bulblets add this beautiful color and texture to the um, to this allium over here. I mean, look at them. Look at this. Let's see. So this is how they start. And then it's just gorgeous. I love them. And over here on this side, I planted a whole lot of stuff, but um, they're still tiny. And these onions over here, these are red onions that stayed from last winter because I had the frost covers on them and I'm letting them go to seed. But look at these bloom heads. I think they are beautiful. Wouldn't you agree? And alliums or onions are a biannual, so they uh, grow their bulb the first year and then the second year is when they produce the blooms in order to go to seed. And uh, this is their second year over here. And I just love them so much. Especially with the green background. I think they look gorgeous. The white with the green background is just beautiful. 
and hopefully in a few days I'll be able to come here to the vegetable garden and clean up this area. And I got some raspberries over here. So this is it for the June garden tour. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you are new here don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again in the next video. Bye! Okay I had to show you this. The black jet hollyhock is starting to bloom and I'm sorry the lighting is not the best but today is June 26 and we have blooms this is the first time I actually see these blooms I think they're gorgeous and I can't wait for all these panicles to fill up with blooms that's gonna be so gorgeous I love it and also over here the anise hyssop is also starting to bloom I actually set up everything on drip in here so I'm very proud of myself and I've been working on setting up drip all over the garden